So yesterday we got a glimpse at what Shadow Keep was gonna bring in terms of builds. Today we have five builds, which pretty much concludes builds to bring into Shadow Keep. Now these builds are already pretty good, but now they're about to exponentially get good, largely due to like artifact mods, but also just in general, the synergy itself between these exotic and subclasses is extremely powerful. Depending on how you spec things out, one of these builds could wind up being a main build inside of Shadow Keep for you. So Fellas, without further ado, let's get into it. First up, we are taking a look at Doomfang in Top Tree Sentinel. That's right, Top Tree. Doomfang comes with the exotic perk Horns of Doom, which allows void melee kills to give you super energy. Now that super energy is ginormous. You can see it right here in this gameplay. Every melee kill with a full melee charge substantially throws up our super. So going into something like Shadow Keep, loading everything out into strength will result in your super being generated extremely fast and supers inside of shadow keep take a very long time to get like in crucible games you're not going to get more than two supers even if you're slaying out unless of course you're specking for it this is a build that greatly rewards you on the front end of getting your super and if you got your strength maxed out and your melee cooldown is extremely low constantly proccing horns of doom won't be an issue now the reason why i say top tree sentinel is number one, melee kills restore health. So if you find yourself in a pinch, voila, you'll restore health for you and your allies. Simultaneously, defensive strike will grant you and your allies an overshield, which is super beneficial. But the main thing out of all of this is of course, Ward of Dawn will grant us weapons of light in Shadow Keep, which will grant us the highest buff at 35% more damage. So essentially, as soon as you get your super, which is gonna be very, very fast here with Doomfang, do a switcheroo with Saint-14, pop your bubble, Saint-14 will now grant you and your ally starless knight which is essentially an overshield to combine that with weapons of light but as soon as you pop your bubble just you simply swap back to doomfang and voila you still get the perk starless knight you're still granting yourself and your allies an overshield but now you can immediately start taking advantage of doomfang again and horns of doom to get your super back even faster this is just a very good way guys of constantly having a bubble ready for you and your teammates all right moving on to our next build this one was incredibly surprising to me it was recommended from my friend dimitri and it involves controverse hold plus chaos accelerant on top tree void walker now controverse hold normally an exotic we think of for pvp as it allows us to resist incoming damage while charging your void grenade but notice here at the bottom it states that charged void grenades return a random amount of grenade energy on hit now this is not necessarily beneficial for handheld supernovas or even just regular grenades for that matter but for something like chaos accelerant oh this is when it gets nasty you see you hold your grenade button to overcharge your grenade which makes your grenade more deadly and more effective but you don't just do this for any grenade no we do this for vortex grenades which supercharges your vortex grenade allowing it to hit major amounts of damage a lot of people have associated chaos accelerant alongside vortex grenades to be like mini nova bombs during this time frame though as it's consistently doing damage it will be constantly returning turning a random amount of grenade energy and against something like majors there really is no better synergy here than controverse holding chaos accelerant and as you saw from the nightfall the other day unstoppables barrier knights all of these super thick targets is what you're going to be running into constantly more so than just normal trash ads now to make things even better our artifact mods seem to be designed perfectly for this build first up we have overload grenades which states that void grenades cause disruption which actually actually delays ability energy regeneration and lowers combatant damage output, specifically strong against overload champions. But then we have Disruptor Spike, which improves the effect of disruption, lowering that combatant's damage output even further. But as just a nice cherry on top, Oppressive Darkness states that causing damage with a Void Grenade now adds a weakened effect to enemies. So now you're going to have the ability to run around, constantly have a grenade on you at all times, especially if you're specking out for it. And by the way, the gameplay you see here none of this is with any ordnance mods i have nothing in my build that is actually speeding up the recharge rate of my grenade like the only
only thing I ever really do if I need to get a little bit of grenade juice. It's just like melee an enemy. But for the rest of it, this is all controverse hold here. Now you're going to be able to take advantage of disruption, which weakens your target. And you're going to be able to give them a debuff with the press of darkness. Fellas, this is going to be a must have build when dealing with super meaty enemies. Now, some of you are going to ask, what about Nezrak Sin? Why not use that in place of controverse hold? And Nezrak Sin is a very good exotic, allowing us to actually get a boost to all ability energy by simply getting kills that are void related. So even a void weapon like Gnawing Hunger or Recluse can proc something like Abyssal Extractors. The issue with something like Nezirak Sin is that it's a more passive regeneration in comparison to Controverse Hold when dealing damage against high health targets. Nezirak Sin is probably the better exotic if you're say for instance just killing trash ads. Because obviously Controverse Hold is not going to be doing a lot of tick damage to things that it's just instantly killing. Especially with like these mini Nova Bombs or Vortex Grenade. But like I said, in in-game activities, Bungie really stacks things with these high health targets versus just throwing a large amount of ads at you, which is why I think this build is going to be super beneficial for you. Moving on to our next build. This one is kind of the same take as Controverse Hold and Chaos Accelerant, but instead it's with Heart of Inmost Light plus Middle Tree Sentinel. You see, our intrinsic perk here states that using an ability, Grenade, Melee, or Barricade, empowers the other two abilities. And power means abilities have a faster regeneration, melees and grenades do more damage, and barricades have more hit points. Now the main benefit out of all of this is of course the grenade damage. Grenade damage is greatly boosted. So much so that you can actually get one hit kills with sticky grenades inside of PvP. But inside of PvE, when paired with something like void wall grenades, on middle tree sentinel it is one of the best way to clear large amount of ads as for every target that is hit with a void ability a void detonator will also be attached and further hits causes the detonator to explode which deals extra aoe damage now a huge benefit of void wall grenades is not only does it apply the attached void detonator but as it's consistently doing damage it also results in the detonators exploding and again throughout all of these explosions and void detonators going off you and nearby allies are constantly regaining health as well as grenade and melee energy every time one of those detonators explode and having something like Heart of Inmost Light that is helping with that ability regeneration, but also granting stacks of Empower results in more damage, more power, and more kills. You can see why our artifact mods like Overload Grenades, Disruptor Spike, and especially Oppressive Darkness is going to be super beneficial here with Heart of Inmost Light plus Middle Tree Sentinel. I know the rage is all around Ward of Dawn and Weapons of Light, and I'm not going to take anything away from that, but in terms of clearing out ads, this build revolving around Heart of Inmost Light was already a good one and now it's just going to get a lot better now moving into our next build this one is liar's handshake plus combination book now i know these two things are going to get a nerf at least when working together but i do not believe it's going to be trashed considering the way bungie worded this so i don't think bungie's going to outright kill this exotic and the synergy that it has with top tree arc strider i think it's just simply going to be balanced to allow us to no longer like one phase raid bosses now liar's handshake comes with the perk cross counter using your arc melee ability or being hit by a melee attack will allow you to follow up with an extremely powerful melee counterpunch that will heal you. We've shown a lot of footage of this, and yes, it is a melt fest in the current sandbox, as getting stacks of combination blow results in the damage jumping up exponentially. But like Bungie has stated, things are going to be additive going forward. But even in that state, I think this is still going to be a very solid build as the artifact mods are going to pair very nicely here. First up, we've got Thunder Coil, which grants bonus damage for all arc melee abilities and refund super energy on finisher final blows. So you're going to get extra damage with that artifact mod by itself. But then you also have arc battery, which will grant you an overshield and reduce your cooldown for all of your arc class abilities when performing them. And of course, if you're taking advantage of this entire subclass tree, melee kills recharge your dodge ability. Gambler's dodge also gives you back your dodge, thus resulting in extra damage, more stacks of combat combination blow and an extra stack of damage there with thunder coil and as an added cherry on top the artifact mod unstoppable melee will actually allow your arc melee abilities to stagger unshielded enemy combatants it's specifically strong against unstoppable champions and as you've seen from the gameplay before those unstoppable champions do not slow down so having something available to stagger them is going to be a necessity but as an added layer this build will have the potency to probably kill most of those 
unstoppable enemies while staggering them. Which takes us to our final build. This one, whew, this one's gonna be rough. And it involves Wormhusk Crown and Bottom Tree Arc Strider. Now I'm sure when reading off these artifact mods, I figure you guys probably already know where we're going with this. Now Wormhusk, this is an exotic a lot of people thought was wrongfully nerfed considering we have one eye mask. I'm not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna show you the potential that this is gonna have, especially in PVP. As Wormhusk comes with the exotic perk, Burning Souls. Dodging gives a small health and shield buff. I think Wormhusk in its current state is still pretty good. A lot of people say it's useless, which I think is completely wrong. I can't tell you how many times a hunter dodged out of the way to then just re-peek me at maybe not full health, but enough health for them to go from being a one-shot kill to now two-shot, which can honestly result in them winning that duel. But let's go over the synergy of Bottom Tree Arc Strider. First up, you get Lightning Reflexes. So while you are dodging to proc something like Worm Husk, you're also harder to kill. But then you get Focus Breathing, which is one of the most powerful perks out of all the perks on the Arc Strider subclasses. As sprinting recharges your dodge ability, it also increases maximum sprint speed. Now, during this process of dodging, giving yourself back a small bump there in health and shield, when combined with the artifact fact arc battery you will now be granting yourself an overshield and further reducing the cooldown of your arc class ability which is just simply your dodge which already has a pretty fast cooldown especially with something like focus breathing thus resulting in worm husk crown 100 returning as a top tier exotic this season you're gonna see a lot more of this especially in the competitive scene like even if the overshield is just a small overshield that's still gonna be in combination with the health and shield bumps you already get from Wormhusk. We haven't tested it yet, but it has the potential to be even stronger than Wormhusk was back in season three of year one of Destiny 2. It's kind of scared to show that one. Probably going to regret this, but these are the five builds that I would 100% try inside of Shadowkeep. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.